All right, let's dive in and let's show you how you can do some really great uh, data modeling with Hack on 8 uh, using your MongoDB infrastructure. Where I'm going to start is I'm going to reverse engineer an Atlas DB uh, collection, right? So I'm going to do that by connecting to that uh, Atlas DB um, uh, infrastructure, right? Connect there. And then I'm going to say, okay, I want to reverse engineer the MFlix um, sample collection. Now I'm going to do something very specific here. I'm going to try and use the inspection that we do on this collection to infer new types of um, relationships between elements in your, in your database um, using the uh, object IDs that we find there. So let me do that. I'll just um, wait a few seconds. And before we know it, we actually have this um, collection visualized inside our Hackolate environment, not just the collection, Right, and you can see the hierarchical structures of the uh, documents stored here, right there. Right, so really, really. Um very much in tune with these modern uh, data modeling capabilities of your document database, but also the relationship that has been created here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this model. I'm going to save it in my MongoDB webinar folder and say, okay, this is the first thing that I want to, uh, oh, I, that actually didn't work. Let me save it here inside my MongoDB webinar folder and say, okay, this is the MongoDB model that I've reverse engineered, right? Now, why am I doing that? Because in my Hackolate Studio, I can actually push this into my um, uh, GitHub repo really, really easily. So I'm going to create a first commit here, commit and push this into the GitHub repo so that we can then start tracking this and start um, working with this, uh, this uh, data model just as we would in our agile development environment, in our CICD pipeline, um, with, uh, as we would work with our code. Right? So now this uh, model has been added to my GitHub repo. Now, let me make a couple of changes here. Okay, so I'll, I'll add a new collection here, right? I'll, the animals collection. Then I'll say, okay, let's uh, add a first attribute here, right? And that is obviously going to be an object ID, right? I'm going to call out the, the ID, right? And I'm going to say, okay, another um, uh, property here is going to be the name of the animal that is going to be uh, participating. And this is going to be a simple string. And I'm also going to link this back to my movies collection. So here I'm going to say movie ID. Right, so um, movie ID, and this is not going to be a string, this is actually going to be a, an object ID, which I'm going to link over here, just like I did with the comments over there, right? The comments that were linked to the movie, movie as well. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to also choose the right cardinality, right? I ha might have zero to N uh, animals in one movie. Great, so now I've modified the data model. I can actually you know, push this into MongoDB, right? I can create an update script here. Um, if I wanted to, I could create sample data, right? So the sample data is going to be, going to be use, using Faker. Faker, um, really, really cool feature as well. I'm not going to go into that right now. But I could generate the update script here and even apply it if I wanted to, but more likely I'm going to give that to my DevOps people, right? Um, but what I want to show now is that if I save this again, then I can also push this into my GitHub repo Mflix v2, right? Uh, push this right there, right? And now if I go uh, exit this and reopen it, then you will see that in my history of my GitHub files, you will have v1 and v2. Why is that important? Because I can actually compare those two. I can go and check, check you know, how is the v1 different from v2? And it's going to show me, yes, 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 something has been changed. The animals collection has been added and the relationship has also been added to my ERD diagram. Right, really cool. I can generate delta models from this. All of that stuff is uh, readily available. But what I'd like to show now is that you can actually reuse this data model to do other things, to, to do things that you, you might be able to, um, that might want to uh, provide to the rest of your enterprise environment. Like for example, provide an API description to your uh, colleagues for this data model. Right, so we've got really great functionality here to generate open API documentation. Right. Again, really powerful. I need to select a template for this, a template for open API um, documentation. Submit that, right? And then I'll go and say, okay, this is my open API model. Save that. Right. It's going to take a few seconds, but you know the open API model is actually going to contain a whole lot of different things. It's going to create, you know, the entire transactional uh, schema description, you know, of, of of everything that you can do with this um, API. But it's also going to um, generate the documentation for it, right? So uh, this is what I'd like to uh, store here. Open that up. Give me uh, one second here while this is loading. And then you will see that the OpenAPI model is now available uh, 
inside Hackley Studio. Right? And like I said, you know, this is actually quite an elaborate uh, structure. This is a structure that has a lot of different components to it. Right? It's got um, the, the transactional description, it's got the schema ERD, it's got all of the different things here available, and of course the artifact, the main artifact that you would be uh, sharing with um, your colleagues is the open API file. Now uh, you can see the, uh, the file here. It's got the same schema ERD view. It's exactly the same one that we have in the MongoDB model. It's got all the components described as a hierarchy. And of course, it's got the OpenAPI file. The cool thing about the OpenAPI file is that it's going to give you um, the validator from um, OpenAPI so that you can actually test the description of the API right here in your Hackalade, Hackalade Studio. Uh, really powerful functionality, a real time saver for many of our clients. So let's um, save that and go back to our uh, MongoDB model. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because I want to illustrate this one more time, that you can, the fact that you can use the MongoDB model as a basis for other things, right? Um, remember, we talked about the polyglot capabilities of Hackolate in, uh, in the presentation, which meant that we can actually create an umbrella view of the, um, the higher level view of the, um, uh, the data model that is technology agnostic. So I'm going to convert this MongoDB model. Right, so let me save that here as well. Right, and I'm going to say this is my um, polyglot model. Right, so I first have to promote the MongoDB model to be the basis. Right, to be the polyglot basis for uh, our uh, future derived models. Right, so let me show you this. Okay, so I'll quickly save this and close, and then I'll show you this model here, which is the polyglot model that looks exactly the same, right, as the Mong MongoDB model. But I can use this one to um, uh, create new models, to create, for example, an Avro schema that is um, derived from it. Remember, what we're doing here is all con part of a connected structure, right? So all of these different models are linked to each other. The OpenAPI model is linked to the MongoDB model. The polyglot model is linked to the MongoDB model, right? And now I'm going to create a new model, which is an Apache Avro schema, Right? That is going to be derived from the polyglot model. Right? So I'm going to go right there and say grab this polyglot model. But in my Avro schema, I don't need everything. Right? I don't need all of the Mflix uh, uh, entities. I just want the movie entities. Now, here we go. Immediately, we've got that new um, uh, model. It looks exactly the same as the MongoDB representation. However, it has adapted some of the type definitions, some of the data types, um, based on the capabilities of this new target, of this um, uh, Avro schema target. So if I save this right into the same webinar folder, then I am going to get the new file, which I can immediately push into the schema registry if that would be appropriate. Right, so we've got this entire new structure now. We've got a MongoDB model derived from a database. We've got an open API that's derived from the Mongo MongoDB model. We promoted the MongoDB model to be a polyglot model, and now we can actually derive other models from that um, uh, polyglot model, like for example, the Avro schema. Great. With that, I'm going to wrap up this little demo. I hope this was useful, and I look forward to handing it over to someone else. Thank you. Bye-bye.